Uh, Vicente, good afternoon to you and welcome. You're going to have to educate me and I would imagine many people who are watching. Uh, what exactly is a radio galaxy? So as we know, a galaxy is a big collection of gas and dust and stars, dark matter, just like our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which has a supermassive black hole in the center called Sagittarius A star. So most galaxies have supermassive black holes at the center, many millions of times the mass of the sun. But in radio galaxies, there's gas and dust uh, kind of falling into this black hole and the, the black hole is kind of eating it. And as this is happening, uh, there's a huge amount of energy released and charged particles like electrons are getting accelerated to nearly the speed of light. They're getting caught up in the twisted magnetic fields near the supermassive black hole and they're getting funneled out into space, huge distances away from the host galaxy. And they glow not in optical light, but in radio light. So that's why we can detect them with radio galaxies and why they're called radio, why we can detect them with the radio telescope and why they're called radio galaxies. All right, excuse the pun, but why are people in your universe so excited about this? Why is this important scientifically? So the giant radio galaxies that we discovered are really huge. They're kind of super giant. So they are about, each of them are about 62 times the diameter of the Milky Way. So really, really huge. They're bigger than 93% of other giants already found. So these are among the largest single objects in the universe. And it's exciting because we can detect them. The Meerkat telescope is the first that can detect objects that are this big and this faint on the sky. And this leads us to the idea that these giant radio galaxies are probably far more common than we previously thought. And this is giving us clues about how galaxies evolve over time. The determination itself, how was that made? What was the process when someone eventually said, we have a radio galaxy. How complicated was that? The initial stage was actually fairly quick. After we got all of the data from Meerkat, so I work as part of an international collaboration called MITEI, which stands for the Mighty International Gigahertz Tiered Extragalactic Exploration Survey. It's a bit of a mouthful, but there you are. So we have time on the telescope on meerkat and it's collecting that data it took about 24 hours of observations with meerkat and then one of my colleagues in oxford worked very very hard to turn this into a map of the sky and pretty much as soon as we looked at it we spotted some streaks um, that we were pretty sure were giant radio galaxies and my job was to go and look at the optical images of the same region to find out how far away they were and once we knew that we could confirm that they were giants so then all of the work started with the detailed anal analysis um, but the initial detection was actually very quick and would there be a suspicion that there are more of these radio galaxies around does, does your work continue yeah exactly so Based on what we know about how many giant radio galaxies are out there, how many we've detected before, we really shouldn't have detected two of them in the small patch of sky that we were looking at. That would be very, very unlikely. So there's only a probability of about 0.0003% that we found two in this region. So the fact that we did find two tells us that probably this wasn't a huge stroke of luck. Probably there are many more giant radio galaxies out there than we realized and that these giants could be having a strong effect on their host galaxies by blowing out their gas, uh, preventing further star formation, and essentially killing the galaxy. And just finally, this further illustrates, I guess, the, the value of this Meerkat project. Absolutely. I mean, Meerkat is a really phenomenal telescope. Right out of the box, it worked even better than it was planned. Um, all people of South Africa and Africa should be very, very proud of this. Um, it's really cutting edge, and it's really make, putting South Africa on the map and, and world leading in radio astronomy. And this is leading the way for the Square Kilometre Array Telescope, which will be this transcontinental behemoth radio telescope built in South Africa and Western Australia uh, and 
the collaboration between these two countries and internationally um, is going to make some really exciting discoveries. And I thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Jacinta Deleuze, Research Fellow at the University of Cape Town.